I was born in Puerto Rico, and my father joined the Army, the U.S. Army, when I was about maybe five or six years old. And eventually, we moved to the United States. We moved to El Paso, Texas, when I was uh, eight years old. And I was also in third grade and didn't know English. Um, through my, my youth, my parents and I, we moved around the U.S. all over. Every two or three years, we were moving to a different place. Because when you're in the military, you, you go from base to base um, to different jobs and everything. So we would follow wherever my father went. That's where we would go. Uh, so I got to experience and meet a lot of different people, alhamdulillah. Uh, when we had moved to El Paso, there was a large Hispanic community. And um, Latinos, they tend to be Catholic, and my parents were Catholic. So they began to take us to a church, and we started going to Catholic school. Uh, we would go to Sunday school. I actually went to Catholic school in Puerto Rico as well. And um, once we were in El Paso, we continued on with that. I went to a regular public school, but then I would go to Catholic school for Sunday school. And in El Paso, I, I did my, my first communion, um, first confession. I went down through the sacraments in the Catholic Church. For some reason, as a child, I never felt comfortable going to the Catholic Church. There was something about walking inside the church and seeing many statues, many paintings of, of Jesus, of saints, of supposedly Mary, the Virgin Mary. Um, I would feel uncomfortable. I felt like the statues were looking at me, uh, and I, I was a little, little girl, scared, and I would see the, the statues of Jesus, and they would be bloody and gory, and I just didn't think that it was something that would make anyone want to really go to a church and sit there. So even as a child, I felt disconnected. So eventually, after moving again, we went to Alaska, and I lived there for two years. When I was living in Alaska, my parents, they stopped going to church. Um, they, my mother would always say, we believe in God and we can pray to God wherever we are. So we don't have to go to church if we don't want to. And so I felt comfortable with that. So we stopped going to church at that point. Then we moved to Savannah, Georgia. We went literally from one side of the US to the other, very opposites in the, spe in the spectrum. And while we were in, in that part of Georgia, we also did not attend church. Again, we moved and we went to Maryland. And we were living in a place called Odenton, Maryland, which is very close to Baltimore. By that time, I was really fed up of all the moving. Um, I don't know how many uh, elementary schools I went to. I think it was about three. And when we moved to, Mar to Maryland, I think that was the second high school that I was going to. And to be going into a whole new place and making new friends and leaving old friends, it was something that was very difficult. So when I, I went into Maryland, I, I became a little depressed because I didn't know anyone. So during that time, I had seen a movie that caught my attention. It was called Malcolm X. Uh, and I was very, very impressed by the person Malcolm X. And when I watched the movie, I said, I need to read this man's autobiography. So I bought his autobiography, and I read it from cover to cover. And that was the first time that I ever learned anything about Islam. First about the nation of Islam, and then I learned about the true form of Islam. During that time, alhamdulillah, Allah, he puts you in the right place, and he puts the right people in front of you at the right time. It so happened that during that time, I had met a girl that lived close to me, and she was Christian, and her, her father was a pastor. So I started, she asked me once, why don't you come to church with me? Because I go to church on Sundays, and it's really fun. You know, there's a lot of people our age, and I think you would enjoy it. And I told her, you know, I don't like church. You know, I, I really, I don't think so. I don't want to go. And she said, why? And I said, because, you know, they have all these statues, they got all these pictures, you know, I, I don't like that. And she said, don't worry, we're a non-denominational Christian church. 
The only thing that we have is a cross in the middle of the room. And I said, seriously, you, no pictures, no statues, nothing like that? You don't burn the candles, you know, in front of the altar? And no, we don't do any of that. And I said, okay, if it's like that, then I'll go. So I went with her, and I started going to this church. At the, at, during this time, in one of my English classes in high school, there was a girl that used to sit across from me. And in Maryland, I didn't know many Latinos. And this girl, she, I assumed she was Latina. She had similar looking features that Latinos do. And I said, you know, I want to maybe befriend this girl because maybe she is Latina. We can speak Spanish to each other. We can talk. So I approached her and we started talking. And I found out that she was Egyptian. And I thought that was the strangest thing. This was the very first time that I had come across from anyone from the Middle East. And I had all these stereotypes, and I was like, really? Like, you're Egyptian? Like, the pyramids and stuff, the, where the pyramids are? And tell me about this. So, you know, her and I, we started talking a lot, and we became close. And one thing that we really had in common was that both of our parents were very strict. My parents were so traditional, so strict, that they wouldn't even let me go out with fem girlfriends outside to the mall or any place. I couldn't go anywhere with uh, anyone. So her parents were the same way. They wouldn't let her go out. They wouldn't let her do certain things. They, they, if, uh, if you were to go out with a friend, you have to have your parents with you. Like if you wanna go to the mall and hang out with your friends, that's fine. I'll take you to the mall. I will let you meet your friend there and I'll walk a few steps behind you while you and your friend are looking around. And you know, you call us, you flag us down when you need us or when you're ready to go home. This is the same way that my parents were. So during the time that I met my friend, uh, uh, I had my parents meet her parents so that her and I could hang out. So my parents would take us out together and she would come to my house and I started to go to her house. And this was at the same time that I was also going to church. So in the church, I started to go and I felt comfortable there. It was, they had a lot of singing and music they had a lot of socializing. After each uh, service, they would have a big, huge buffet of food. They, uh, they had like, uh, the youth group that would play basketball. They would do all kinds of things. So it was a very welcoming environment for a teenager. And this is one of the things that I liked about going there. Um, but I didn't really find any spiritual fulfillment while going to the church. But I, I was trying my best to find a connection um, so as I started hanging out with my other friend, her name is Hebatullah, by the way, which means a gift from Allah. When I started hanging out with her, I saw that her family was Muslim. Her mother wore hijab and her father prayed. They both prayed. And so I started to wonder, what is this? And I asked her and she said, we're Muslim. And I, it clicked in my head like Malcolm X, Muslim. Okay, I understand. And I thought that they were such good people, that they were trying so hard, they were striving to be good and righteous. And when I saw that, I went back to my friend's father who was the pastor at the other church, and I said, you know, um, Heba's family, they're very good people. They pray, the, her mother, she covers herself, like the Virgin Mary do, does, and, or did. And they do all of these things and they try to please God. So do you think that they're gonna go to hell? And the pastor, he got very quiet. And after some time, he said, if someone does not believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, then yes, they're gonna go to hell. And that was just something that was like a stab to my heart because I really loved my friend that was Muslim, and I said, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I can accept that. And my next question was, so are you telling me that all the Jews that died during the Holocaust, that they're also going to hell? And he said, um, well, if they didn't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then yes, that, that's, that's right, that's right. So that was something that I couldn't really accept. So by this time, when I have all these conflicts in my mind, it was time to move once again. And I moved to Augusta, Georgia, another part of Georgia. 
when I went to Georgia, I, was, I wanted to continue to go to church or to feel some kind of spirituality. So I took my father and I said, can you take, take me somewhere so we can find a place for me to worship? And he said, um, no problem. So we went and we saw two churches sitting side by side in the, on the road. And um, there was one that was a little, it looked like maybe people didn't go there, like it was old. Then there was the other one that looked really nice. So I said, let's go up to that one. When we walked in, they were having a service. Everyone turned around and looked at us. And one man got up, and he approached my father and I. And he said, uh, if you're looking for the black church, it's over there. If you're looking for the black church, it's that one right there. And basically, he walked us out. <laughs> and it was shocking because this is the first time that I experienced something like that. My father is dark, darker skin than I am. He has darker skin than I am. But everyone in that church had white skin, blue eyes, light eyes. So we just looked, we stuck out like a sore thumb. So we walked over to the other church and mashallah, they, it was a small community. They welcomed us and we sat there, but I didn't feel right after that. And I told my dad, you know what, that's it. I'm, I'm done, I'm good. You know, I'm going to worship God in my own house. So I continued going to high school, and I, I finished high school. My father saw that, again, I was depressed because I didn't have many friends. This was a new high school. I was actually a senior at that point, and it was my, the last high school that I attended. I didn't know anyone. Everyone was just talking about their yearbooks and the prom and graduation, and they'd gone the whole four years with all their friends, and I was the newcomer coming in my senior year. So... I, I asked my father, can I go visit Heba? I want to go see her. So he said, you know what, I'll buy you the plane ticket and you can go. He spoke with her family and he, they bought me a ticket and I, I flew to Maryland to visit my friend. When I got to Maryland, it happened to be, my friend said, you know, you can come, but I'm just going to warn you, we'll be fasting, but then we're going to break our fast and then we're going to, you know, we're going to party and hang out. I said, no problem. So I got there and it was actually during the month of Ramadan. And uh, this was in, I think it was 1999. So one of the days that we got there, Heba told me we have to wake up early and we have to go to the, to the mosque. Do you mind if you come with us? I said, no, no problem. And I started, uh, she told me, okay, well, if you're going to come inside, can you wear a scarf? I said, no, no problem, I'll go. Um, so we went, and it, ha it happened to be the day of Eid. And it was the, the end of the month of Ramadan, it was Eid. And we went, early prayer was about, I think, 8 o'clock. And when we were approaching the masjid, she said, you know, you might want to just stand outside. And I said, I don't feel comfortable standing outside. I want to go inside. And she said, okay, you can come inside. So once we were inside, she said, you know, we're going to pray soon, so you might want to sit in the back. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to sit in the back because then people are going to look at me funny and... You know, she said, okay, then come and sit next to me. So I sat with her for a while, and people were talking, and I, I was hearing something, and I, I didn't know what it was, but it kept on going over and over and over. And while I was sitting there, then all of a sudden, everyone started to get up. They were about to pray. And my friend said, um, you know, we're going to pray, so now you can go to the back. And I was like, no, it's so embarrassing. Can I just stand next to you? Can I, I'll do whatever you do, I'll do it. And she was like, okay, just you know, put your foot next to mine and just do what I do. And I said, okay, all right, khalas, inshallah, I'm going to do this. Well, I didn't say that at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so they started to pray, and I followed them. And I, I did the whole prayer. And then we, we, we went out. When we went outside, during that time, my friend wasn't wearing hijab. So as soon as we got back in the car, she took off her scarf. And she was like, oh, she took it off. And she was like, oh, now you take yours off. And I was like, we haven't even left the parking lot yet. Just, no, I'm not taking it off right now. And her parents were just giggling, and, and she, she was like, just take it off. Don't be silly. And I, I said, no, I want to keep it on. So we went back to her house. By that point, I took it off. And she said, you know, it was early. Let's go take a nap, and then we'll wake back up, and then we'll go out. And I said, okay, no problem. So I laid next, uh, I, I was with her in her room, and we, we laid down in her bed. And we started to fall asleep. But something kept on 
going in the back of my mind. And it was something like, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. And I was like, what is that? And it just kept on going, like a song when it gets stuck in your head when you go out into the supermarket or something. And it was just there and it kept repeating itself. And I just, I shot up and I said, Heba. She was like, what? What? She was already sleeping. I said, Heba, what is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar? And I went through the whole, what does that mean? And she was like, oh, you know, God is great. God is great. God is great. There is no God but God. I said, oh, okay. All right. So went back to sleep. So after that, I start, we went out again, and we went to a different place. Uh, we went to a gathering of Muslims, and I saw people praying for the first time as Muslims. And I started asking questions. Why do the women have to pray behind the men? And I'm sitting with my friend. We're, we're young. And she tells me, hello. Don't you know if the women were praying in front of the men, what do you think the men would be thinking about? <laughs> and I said, that makes sense. SubhanAllah, that makes sense. And I said, okay, okay. And I, I kept on coming with more questions, more questions. And, you know, she would answer them, and I'd be like, wow, this is so easy. And then I started asking her parents questions. And I asked questions to the point that her father said, you know what, look, take some books. Here you go. You take these books, you read them, stop asking me. And I said, okay. So I took the books back with me to Georgia. And I read, the first one that I read was called Islam versus Christianity. And it was a very small book. And when I read that book, every single question that I had ever had about God, about life, about Jesus, who he was, why I didn't feel right going to the Catholic Church, why going to the Christian Church wasn't enough for me. Because I was looking for an answer that I finally found in this little book after asking some questions. Alhamdulillah. Uh, it took a while though for me to, to understand what I needed to do to become a Muslim. So I started, during this time it was the age of AOL, America Online, chat rooms and such. Um, I started looking for Muslims on the internet and I wanted to find a Muslim that lived close to me. So I went into a chat room and it was like an Atlanta chat room and I saw a name that came out as a, it looked like a Muslim name. And it was Fadl. And I, I am the person, I sent them a message. And I said, um, I'm interested in, about, in knowing about Islam. And it was, a, it was a man, it was a brother. And since he saw that this strange woman was messaging him, he said, you know, like whatever, no, I'm, like, I'm not gonna talk to you. And I said, okay. I said, and I put ma salama, which means goodbye in Arabic, because at this point I knew a few Arabic words. And then he, he, he sent me a message and he said, how do you know that? And I said, because I told you, I'm, I'm interested in learning about Islam. I have an Egyptian friend, she's Muslim. I told him the whole story and he said, send me your number and I'm gonna call you right now. And I said, this is crazy for me to do, but I sent him my number. He called me and he said, do you believe that God is one? And I said, yes. And he said, do you believe that Muhammad? By this point, I had read about Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. <laughs> and by this time, by this time I had learned about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he asked me, do you believe that Muhammad is a pro was the final messenger? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, repeat after me. La ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah and I did so and he said I'm gonna come and see you I live in Atlanta but I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bring you some things and we're gonna do this but you need some witnesses so I met him and his family in uh, he happened to have cousins that live close to me we met there and I said my shahada there uh, in front of them Alhamdulillah this was in the year 2000 I think it was about August or September of 2000 and after that, I called my friend, the Egyptian friend, and I told her, she didn't even know I knew certain things. She didn't know what words I had learned or anything. So when I called her, I said, um, Heba, you know, after we, we said, how you doing, what's going on and everything, I was like, you know, I took my shahada yesterday. And she said, what? You did what? I took my shahada yesterday. 
All I heard was, Baba, Mama! <laughs> As she was t screaming to her parents what I had done. And immediately her parents, they, they, they begged me to fly to, to see them and I did so and they took me to the mosque and they said, you have to do your shahada in the masjid. So I, I did my shahada three times, alhamdulillah. It's like, the sunnah is, is three. And uh, alhamdulillah. And that was how, when and why Islam for me. Alhamdulillah. Right now, I, um, I want to take the opportunity to tell you that my, uh, I met my husband seven years ago, a little over seven years ago. Alhamdulillah. Him and I, we're both Latino. And we, we wanted to also give da'wah to people that, that speak Spanish. And so we started doing different things. And one of the things that we did after we had children, because we realized that there weren't enough resources in Spanish, for, um, for children about Islam, we started an organization called Hablamos Islam. And if you go on our website, www.hablamosislam.com, I have cards I can give out. Um, you can go in and, and see what we have. And also we have the project Hablamos Islam Niños. Uh, right now we're trying to raise funds so that we can distribute our, um, we, we do books and we also have videos online that are free. We want to distribute them in countries that don't have these resources. Because surprisingly, when I went to Puerto Rico, I didn't know that there were Muslims in Puerto Rico and all over Latin America. When I went to Puerto Rico, I, real, I found out that there are actually nine masajid, actually eight masajid in Puerto Rico. And it was mind boggling. I thought that I would be the only Latino Muslim in the world, but it's not the case. Alhamdulillah. So uh, inshallah, please visit our site and just uh, show us your, your uh, <laughs> support, inshallah. Jazakallah khair.